Welcome to the waterway, I think. That's what this place is called, right? Yeah, the underground waterway. Yeah, same difference. Now, what I want to know is, I never tried this before, but can I cheese this as well? Yeah. Nope, I cannot, okay. Yeah, basically, there's a chest up there as well. However, we gotta do this one in a legit way. And granted, that's not very difficult. So we're gonna give ourselves some unburst. You know, I sent both a chance to uh, reload my barrier sludge. Maybe get some money monies from these enemy enemies, and just be on the way. Alright. And of course, we got some more over here. And now, Nedzies. I come over here because, yeah, one more of these guys spawns, and you'll want to get rid of him if you're going for all the chests. And with that, an introduction into a few things. First is these little pots here. As you can tell, this little science jar changes various colors. Red, green, and blue. And they each have different effects. The red one here is a basically a concussive destruction, uh, destruction blast. The green one is an HP effect that gives you more HP orbs. And the blue one allows you to freeze nearby enemies. He's, they're very good in combat, it's a nice little idea, but... Eh, not really a big deal. So what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna hit it when it goes... Oh, never mind. I'm always bad at timing those things, by the way. So yeah, there's that. Here's the blue one. Oh, or not. Also, you can't get hurt by that, so be wary. So that's one thing. Oh, actually, there's another one over here. Let's see if we can try that again. Oh, actually, so it isn't a free. It's a D-Link uh, drop. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I was right about the green one. I'm certain about that. Now, here's the second thing. You remember that little uh, gill grinding trick I was talking to you about earlier? Well, there's an easy way to abuse this. As long as... Now, as you can tell, when we hit this little wheel here, our command gauge builds up. You can use this to get yourself the automatic finisher for Gill Rush. And when you use it on the wheel, it also drops uh, little money pieces. So if you really want to, and you don't feel like grinding enemies for money, maybe you just want to do things fairly, but you still want to be having a giant profit, just spam your normal attacks on this wheel right here, and then you'll just make yourself some extra money. Make money, money, money. Oh, you gotta be careful, because once that tire runs down, well, the thing goes back, and if you use a finisher while it's turning around to its normal format, then it doesn't count. It's kind of annoying. But yeah, easy way to, to grind guild if you need to. If you don't care about enemies. But now for this thing's actual purpose. As you saw, now for the third time, a gate rises when you hit this thing once. And it's got a time limit. You want to come over this way before the thing uh, falls down, which is not very difficult, by the way. Just cartwheel and you're good to go. Once the timer goes down, you're... Basically stuck, but not really. Uh, more on that in a second. So we can get rid of you. Up here, you'll find yourself another treasure chest with a shimmering crystal on it. So if you didn't get one before for your cure, there's a perfect way to get one right now. Now you will tool, Bazaar. Thank you. No money. Thank you. All right, so we hit that one a second time, and now this one lifts up. You get twelve signs for this one. But here's the thing, there are two gates that rise when you hit that little steering wheel. You don't want to come this way and grab both of them if possible. You should be able to grab both of them in your first try if you're lucky enough. I, however, am not. So yeah, you grab that one there, come go with that, and then you come this way. Well, I guess I'll just show you instead of uh, spoiling things. But I'll get rid of these on first because they're very tempting and I want the extra, you know, experience points. Go rush! Also, I think we're help depending on how many enemies you hit at once with the Guild Rush, or the Gold Rush, sorry, getting your name, uh, you'll get more gold. So say you hit four of those little uh, red pots, you got a chance of getting yourselves 0 to 28 gold in one shot. Very, very handy stuff. Alright, that's basically it. Let's try this one more time, hit that. And this time, since I don't need to grab the other chest, I just cartwheel our way to victory. Cartwheel, 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 cartwheel. Out of my way, I'm first. Out of my way. Out of my ways. And here we get the last area chest for this particular area. And it contains a regular fire. So say... You aren't aware, this is probably what you get before you get efficient with Faraga. And it's just the same as it's always been. Launch a ball, fire towards enemies. 
Doesn't get any more basic than that. Not the fact that I snitched for Raga, but since it can turn to Ra into Fear Raga later, well, yes, any more. All right, we got all the chests in this area, and now we go here. In this area, we gotta sell some po more pots. Go figure. More unversed, as well as two little uh, levels in a sense. So let me get rid of these guys, and I'll explain that a little more in depth. Ow! I hit him hard. He <laughs> heard. All right. So you got basically two levels here. Will you get out! Seriously, jeez, I'm trying to say something to the audience. Be patient, man. Seriously. Anyway, so you got yourself two levels in a sense. You got up high here, where you can grab some extra chests and uh, buy an extra unverse, and then you got down there, which will basically is basically the way you need to go to go to the next area. However, I prefer the high road, so I'm gonna take this thing for a little bit of a joyride. Buy yourself some more of uh, these guys. Get yourself some more experience points, and then I'll just be on my way. Dunsies. I guess all the shimmering crystals from there too. Just swipey, swipey, swipey. Goody, goody, goody. Get rush, bang. And then we get yourself a giant chest, which, as you can expect, is a spider chest. But you immediately knock it out with a fish and froga, and that's it. Yeah, that's how powerful it is. If you didn't have a better comparison earlier. So that contains, so that's all the treasure chests we have up here. I'm not missing anything, I don't think. So now we can jump down! Geronimo! And I did not mean to do that, but I'll take it. Saves me the time and effort. Alright, get rid of these things out of my way. Ow, stop that, you troll! Kill rush! I'll take all this. And now over here we get ourselves a balloon letter. Balloon letters are very interesting. In the sense they, they work very similar to that of ethers. Which is strange considering we don't even have MP in this game, but you know how it is. Hey, let's go stock. Gotta remember this. It's on here? Or does it actually count as a command? Uh, it counts as a command, go figure. Can be used once to completely restore the D-Link gauge. So if you really want it that badly, there you go. Actually, you know what? While we're here, I'm curious. What is the Ethan's purpose in this game? Can you use once to restore a large portion of the focus gauge? Oh, okay, that makes a little more sense. Again, not ne too necessary, but I guess very helpful. Also, you got one extra command slot here for friendship. And don't worry about it, that's not very useful. In my opinion. But okay, that should be it. Now on to another advantage to having Fish and Froga. Or I guess just any kind of fire-related ability. See this little kettle right here? Why do you think you can lock onto it? Here's a reason. If you hit with any kind of fire thing, the thing loads up, it gets a little bit of a jump boost. From the little, little uh, steam bubbles. You take this one up here, you yourselves get another treasure chest. And I think the last one in this area. So we'll grab that, it contains MAGNET! And you know how much I love MAGNET for grinding in this game. And you can imagine how useful it is in this game too. I get rid of you! Nice. Thank you. I love my bizarre too much. Stop that. You fitty fanny. And I. Oh, now we're level 12, not bad. Okay, and then it's just from here we can jump down. By the way, if you do fall down there from by accident, there's this thing here that you can take as well. Saves you a bit of time. But now we come over here, and we get ourselves two chests. Hmm, I wonder which one's actually an item. Well, this one has a potion. Unless the next one has a spire chest, so you burn in hell. Or the, sorry, the underworld. I can't remember, I remember those, uh, PG ratings, man. Alright, we got ourselves some one last wave on, on first, and we can be on our way. And now we're activating Spellweaver again. I've done this in a while. <laughs> and by a while, I mean like an entire session. Wait, it's actually. Oh no, never mind. 
not say, there's no way you took care of them that quickly. There's more to it than this. You guys have some more large body clones. And they go down like a, in a pinch, thanks to Spell Weaver. Okay, now we can be on our way. Let's move on. Whee! Something's not right. What do you mean? Have done that. Uh, done that in the actual movie. But yeah, here we have to defeat the spirit of the magic mirror. Essentially, our boss for this world. And he's not too difficult. He can be a bit tricky, but he's very easy. This guy's main thing he, they like to do, only face face outside the side. He also likes to do a little bit of a funny trick. My recommendation for finding this guy is using any kind of ranged attack, so Blizzara, your fires, whatever. Now a copy trick. When he, when he brings out the main faces, you gotta look for the one that looks completely different. Usually the one that's smiling. It's not too hard to find. Just keep uh, going down this corridor. You'll see him eventually. I think. Yeah, here it is. So then they just knock him out, and the thing ends, and then you just keep on going. Once you hit him with enough attacks... Oh, if I could actually show that. Oh, he's gonna... Yeah, he's gonna do a little, sh little meteor attack. Screw you, man. Once you hit, yeah, once you hit with him, I can actually do that before we... Okay, here's the second little uh, trick. Yeah, just look for the one that's keeping you smiling, run towards it. On the second phase, he, only if he does it twice. But yeah, you hit him enough times that I can actually show it off. Here we go, you knock him down, he gives you a bit of a chance to free shoot him. And of course, when things are about to end... Oh yeah, he also does a little, uh, blizzard trick. Just barrier. Oh, never mind. Apparently it doesn't work. Yep, doesn't work. Okay, so just dump cartwheel out of that then. Now, when you're confused, your command- your, uh, controls get switched around. So left becomes right, right becomes left, you get the idea. I love if I could end this guy. Some of barrier surge, fool! Go, Bubble Blast! Go! Max, 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 This is what happens when you max out your ability! And we knocked out the Magic Mirror Spirit. Uh, looks like you're going to be telling the Evil Witch how beautiful she is any longer. Oh, who knows? Maybe you, maybe you survive long enough to uh, be in the Shrek movies. If those haven't ha happened already. Oh, you know, he's actually still alive. The Queen is gone, my service done. Adieu, O oh victorious one. So, that was just random, wasn't it? And she doesn't even know what the point of that thing was. It just happened. Uh, Prince, where are you? Uh, dude, dude, and... No, okay. He kissed a corpse. <sighs> Is there a, uh, diseased version of bestiality? So, so he just commanded it. Princess! Uh, or maybe not. Because apparently she's not dead. Oh. Uh, and I still don't understand the logic of that. And yes, I know, Disney movie, get over it. But true love's kiss... Mm -mm. That, that, that does not work. It doesn't work. But hey, she's awake now, so it, it don't matter. <laughs> and the dwarves are happy again. Even freaking uh, dope, Dopey's just doing freaking cartwheels and enjoy. 
That's actually kind of funny. Hit the power of true love, apparently. Things. Oh, flashback. Ventus, why won't you wake up? Sweet. <laughs> Almost like siblings. They all live happily ever after. Every waking is the a end. Maybe Vent left because it was his time. Possibly. But now we forge ourselves a D-Link with Snow White. We get ourselves a treasure trove keyblade. A keyblade that makes up for its poor range with a balance boost of strength and magic. Ooh, it actually also also reminds me. I didn't switch out my keyblade for a uh, from Castle of Dreams, did I? Uh, let's check that real quick. Nope, I stuck with Rainfell, okay. See, there's Stroke of Midnight. And the, uh, Treasure Trove. This is basically the exact same thing as that. And Treasure Trove is just... The same thing with it. One increase of strength. And for you guys wondering, yes, all the characters have obtained the exact same keyblades throughout the entire game. Well, with one or two exceptions. There are some exclusives to make things, uh, more unique. But okay, so that was the Dwarf Woodlands. Now before we head out, we say we go to ch uh, check out the, uh, Snow White dealing. Because that's a bit fun. And we're gonna head ourselves to the courtyard. Because I want to show off one extra thing, too. Alright, so let's go into the aqueduct. Let me do... Snow White! Snow White's abilities are based on that of her dwarf companions. Sleepy, Grumpy, and Duck. You can probably imagine what two of the three do. Sleepy puts enemies to sleep. Grumpy has a bit of a strike rate attack. However, not exactly strike rate in the fact that, as you saw, from that one hit, he actually, uh, well, we'll see. Anyways, the finisher is called Sweet Memory, which is a little tornado attack. Basically, look at the prompt, press it, and you, at maximum, you'll push send the enemies flying. Completely distracted. So we got that. Sleepy, Grumpy, and of course, Dunk, Gila. But personally, I love Grumpy's the most, if only because of how his thing works. This is basically a different attack which you get later called Strike Rate. Or not Strike Rate. You, you guys know what Strike Rate is. I uh, know. It's a different type of Strike Rate called Treasure Rate. Which basically the way it works is when it hits, it deals just as much damage. Uh, well, it deals. It deals basically each hit as a. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. A uh, HP jackpot effect. Also, this can tell command thing is not dying. That's because, well, D-Link. What are you gonna do? So now we're gonna revert. And while we're here, this is a Birth by Sleep exclusive to my knowledge. Basically, for each world you complete, one of these things will show up. And they're basically little time trials. So if we examine it, there's a powerful negative energy. Let's leave it alone for now. Yeah, it's basically a time attack little scenario. They're the, this game's mini games. Now, why they have them, I have no idea, because unless you're doing this on the gear mode, you, you probably have no reason to actually tackle these. They don't get rewards as far as I'm aware, and I've not, never bothered, bothered with them. That being said, for you guys that are curious, I will plan on doing a, a, each one, 
Blah. I'll be doing an entire episode slash session dedicated to each character's record things, you know, as they come out. I'll also do the exact same within each world, in which case I'll just show one for, you know, just one entire thing. But yeah, that's basically how that's gonna work. Now, we're not gonna end things here quite yet, because I, because I saw and showed off the actual thing I want to show off. So if we go back to the vault, well, nothing changes, we grabbed all the treasure chests, so why are we back here? Well, not try, well, not to show off that, obviously. All those little tips for you guys need a garden in there. There you go. It's perfect. Not as effective as, as the, uh, well, yeah, not as effective as Reflega, but it's good. But if you come back this way, to where we found the magic mirror, we get ourselves in an actual safe one location. Now, why you'd want to use this, well, you got me. But I personally like it because, you know, it's better than having to just go back and forth through the areas. You can just teleport and just go in a straight line. Maybe you just want to fight the enemies in this area as opposed to the underground waterway. It makes things easier. And that's basically why I just want to show off. Before we head on off, the abilities that I'm going to be grinding off screen. So let's head over to the courtyard and make sure I show you guys everything that I want to. Oh, this is the world, please. Alright. So what I'm going to be grinding off screen. Oh, wait, did I think I'm in here? Now that's right, it's at, at the, uh, the cottage clearing. Whoopsies! <laughs> We're gonna land at the cottage clearing. Much better, much better. Okay. So, grinding's gonna be a little bit interesting. So the main thing I'm gonna be grinding is that I'm gonna be grinding two magnets, first and foremost. So I'm gonna grab an extra one of these. Uh... I'm going to be also doing, let's see here, ah, I'll also be grinding Fission for Aga and our, our Blizzara. Ooh, excuse me. And this, wait, is there actually an extra thing to that? I'm curious. Hmm, interesting. I don't have it in there. Yeah, that's weird. I'm not sure why I don't do that. But I guess I'll, uh, eh, I, I, actually I guess it doesn't matter. So we got, so we did that, we'll do that. What else, what else? Oh yes, this. So here's where things get interesting. Now, if you're going for what I'm going to be going for, there are two things that you can try and do. One is get, it's two Fyras. Two Fyra commands. And you're going to be wanting to find and two of those so we, that we can make Fyra. Alternatively though, if you haven't managed to grind out, well, if I show it off better here, Fire Dash. Lower your zone fire, then punish far away enemies with a charge attack. Basically, slide a dash, but, you know, with fire. If you manage to grab one of these while you're grinding, I, can, I highly recommend grinding this for, uh, instead of the actual extra fire. There's not much of a difference in change, although, except, um, maybe depending on what you use, like, depending on what crystal you use, it'll be a different effect than the other one. But yeah, you... Yeah, if you don't have the uh, fire dash, then use the second fire rod when you get to that point. Uh, if you do have it, then grind that out. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Either way, it won't matter, especially if you're going for what I'm going. And that's basically it. That, so, I'll be grind, so I'll grind those off screen, and I'll catch you guys next time for the last roll in our trinity. So that's then done, guys. That's going to do it for this session of... Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix. If you guys have enjoyed it so far, of course, as always, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. Share this video with your friends, should you feel the need to. And of course, subscribe if you are new here to the channel and join the Dread Knights. Terra, Panthers, and Aqua. Specific, yeah, specifically Aqua in this case. In their quest to protect all the worlds from the end first and discover the true meaning of this entire story. Because again, it's gotta have some relevance, right? Every Kingdom Hearts game does. But hey, until next time, this is my before signing out. Have a great your day, take care, and let's over to MTU for the end card slate. And I'll catch you guys in the next session. <laughs>